Good morning. <clears throat> so I'm doing this a little bit later than usual. Um, hopefully the signal will be better than uh, it was the other day. I'm in Jerusalem right now, leaving Jerusalem. It's a little bit of a cool look here. Um, so I'm going from Jerusalem now to Tel Aviv. <clears throat> good morning, Kelly. Good morning, Uri. Good morning, Mordechai. Good morning, a lot of people that are here. Thank you for jumping in. Um, so I'm on my way to WeWork Tel Aviv. I'm not going to be able to read, uh, obviously, the comments when I'm, uh, when I'm driving. And I really hope that my driving conditions will allow me to stream uh, without disconnecting. But, <clears throat> you know, I am driving. So if we do get disconnected and just, I mean, not disconnected, but if the video freezes, then know that that's why I will uh, jump right back in uh, as soon as I can. Anyway, um, so... You know, on the one hand, I was thinking about this stream. Uh, good morning, Shai. I was thinking about this stream, um, and I think it's somewhat preaching to the choir because you guys are all on Twitter. But <clears throat> Twitter, uh, I think, is probably the most misunderstood platform that uh, that I'm a, that I'm familiar with. I mean, I don't. You know, it's not by any means. Um, you know, it's not it's not mainstream uh, yet. I don't think. I don't know if it will ever be kind of mainstream. But uh, too many people say to me, "I don't get Twitter. I have nothing to tweet. I have nothing to say." You know, and I'm not on Twitter. And to me, that's like that's just so crazy to me that there's still companies and still even individuals that are not on Twitter. Um, I will be reading your tweets and comments and everything afterwards. But I am driving, so I'm not going to be doing it now. Um, if I stop at a red light or anything, then I'll then I'll read. But right now, I have my eyes on the road because, and I'm going into a tunnel right now, so I don't know if there's any reception in the tunnel. If I get disconnected, I'm gonna hopefully jump right back on. Um, <clears throat> you know, people say to me, "Oh, you know, you shouldn't be meerkatting when you're driving." I'm driving. I'm not looking at the meerkat. I'm not. The only time I answer questions and comments is when I'm in traffic. So thank you everyone for your concern. But I'm driving with uh, my eyes on the road, my hands on the steering wheel, and all is good in the hood. Um, Anyway, about Twitter. So, the bottom line is that, you know, there are a lot of social platforms out there, and I'm a big believer in spreading the wealth and, you know, distributing content on different platforms, obviously. I'm definitely not a big fan of putting all your eggs in one basket. Having said that, if I had to choose one platform to be on, out of, you know, let's say, well, what am I on right now? I'm active on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Instagram, Pinterest, um, Meerkat. Flipboard, I consider a social network because I have a lot of engagement there. Um, it's pretty much the main ones. If I had to choose one, I would absolutely, without any doubt whatsoever, without even hesitating, I would choose Twitter. Uh, does Twitter get the most engagement, the most replies? Absolutely not. Um, is it, you know, the most visually appealing? You know, are there? No. Um, but Twitter is is a game changer for me at least and every major accomplishment that I've ever had in terms of relationships or in terms of just getting exposure for a company or anything that I've ever done really globally um, I would say it was an indirect result of my blogging and my content but it, it always happened on Twitter you know all any PR I've done for companies Twitter any relationships that I've had all happened through Twitter with very few exceptions one exception I could think of is uh, Vic Kondatra from uh, previously of Google, senior uh, VP engineering at Google, was in charge of Google+, Plus. we connected on Google+. Plus. Now I'm gonna red lights, let me read some comments. Whoa, wow. Okay, let me read some quick comments. Good morning, hello, good morning. Hey Neve, thanks man, thanks for that, I like the shirt too. Um, connection is great, excellent, no gum, nice. <laughs> Very funny. Uh, oh man, there's too many comments. All right, I'll have to read some more later, I'm driving again. <clears throat> but, uh, I mean, so yeah, Vic and I connected on Google Plus and I interviewed him and we're, we're good buddies and that, that happened on Google Plus and um, Wozniak, when Wozniak uh, came to Israel, and uh, I gotta tell that story because that's an amazing story even though it's not directly related to Twitter because Wozniak uses Twitter as four square check-ins basically. If you look at Wozniak's uh, stream, it's all four square check-ins. Uh, but I mean, years and years and years ago, uh, as part of my, oh, I'm back in a red light now. Hold on, I just sent up a Twitter to sign up for Meerkat. You just set up a Twitter. Wow. Wow. Okay, you didn't have Twitter before. Well, you're 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 missing out, and, and you'll hear why in this in this stream. Um, 
So years ago, and part of, as part of my whole content strategy, I guess you'll call it, I decided I wanted to start interviewing people and I really did set myself up a list of people, a dream team kind of dream list of people that I wanted to interview and I set my bar really, really high, including Marissa Mayer, including some pretty crazy people, even Elon Musk. One day, all right, you can make fun of me, but one day I'm gonna interview Elon Musk. I don't know how I'm gonna get to him, but I'm gonna do it. Uh, but, but at the top of the list was Steve Wozniak, the founder of Apple, a legendary founder of Apple. I'm at a red light, let's see if I can read some stuff. What do you think about the two-state thing? I'm really not gonna go near there right now. I mean, we're not talking about politics, it's not at all my, no, not, no. Good AM, live from the train, this dude next to me is like, that's Meerkat, that's cool, Jeff. Yeah, Meerkat's becoming pretty, pretty viral. I just set up a Twitter, beautiful. Um, Twitter's the epitome of social serendipity. I completely agree, Kelly. Uh, I got you back. Hey, what's up, Talia? I agree Twitter had changed the course of my life, business, and brand, definitely. Um, hi, Neve. I give Shy some love. Talia, I give Shy some love. Later is good. I need to finish binge watching How I Met Your Mother, so I've been missing your other feeds. Um, okay, <clears throat> so I'll read the rest later. Anyway, um, so at the top of the list was Steve Wozniak, and I was like, literally when I made this list, right, I kind of like, my other personality, my other self kind of laughed at my first self and be like, yeah, you're not interviewing Marissa Mayer, and you're not interviewing Steve Wozniak, stop dreaming. But I was like, you know what, I'm doing it, and I'm a big believer in aiming high and, you know, the whole aim for the stars thing. Um, and so, um, you know, I, I set myself a goal that I'm going to reach Steve Wozniak. It all happened through Facebook, to be honest with you, and um, I ended, in, ended up interviewing him over email by uh, Intercontinental in Tel Aviv. And, you know, I, I go to this hotel and I'm like trembling, right? I'm meeting Steve Wozniak, I'm trembling. And he comes down, he has his laundry, he gives it to the front desk and he's like talking to me, we we're gonna have breakfast. He's like, you know what? I have an, I have an upset stomach, we're not gonna have breakfast. And I was like, it was completely surreal because the guy's completely down to earth. You would never know that he founded Apple in his garage, it's, it's wild. Uh, but we sat for like a good hour and a half, two hours talking and about Israeli tech, about tech in general. He showed me his geeky watch, crazy cool watch that he had. And we just talked about all kinds of stuff and it was unbelievable. I took an amazing video interview with him. You could just YouTube my name with, the, with Steve Wozniak and you'll, you'll be able to watch it. It was totally, totally surreal. But that happened through Facebook. Amazing, amazing stories happened to, you, happened to me through Twitter. But the first first before I tell stories, you know, for those that, that like somebody here just said that they just opened the Twitter account. For those that, that aren't on Twitter or anybody that knows somebody that's not on Twitter and that there are many people like that and we all know that the majority of Twitter users aren't really tweeting and they're just not, they're not active and if they are active, they're just listening. And so, um, I, you know, if you know someone that's not on Twitter and doesn't get it, then I really think that, you know, if you care about this person, honestly, I know I'm sounding very dramatic, you really should tell them to get on Twitter because it really doesn't matter what you're doing in life. It really doesn't matter if you're a professional or if you just want to connect with cool people or if you're a dancer and you want to connect with other dance, it doesn't matter. Twitter, I feel, brings down the, 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 the boundaries of society. I feel like it. So I know, for example, you know, last um, last summer, this past summer, <clears throat> I took a picture. And again, I don't want to go near the topic because it is whatever. It doesn't matter. The point is, I took a picture and I tweeted it. And rough estimate because there's really no way to know and quantify how many people exactly saw the picture. But it got like 1,200 retweets. It was picked up by Mashable. It was picked up by BuzzFeed. It was picked up by Times of Israel. It, was, it got, I mean, roughly, roughly 50 million views at least. One tweet. That can't happen really anywhere else. I mean, I've gotten I've gotten things to go viral uh, by all standards on Google Plus, like you know, thousands of shares, but but 50 million views. That that is something that can only happen on Twitter. And we all know the famous stories, you know, about the Hudson plane, right? The Hudson the land the plane that landed on the Hudson. Uh, the guy uh, was called up to to rescue, and he took a picture with his phone, and he tweeted the picture, and it had. 90 million views before CNN even picked up the story. And the famous, you know, there's so many stories about Twitter and things going like insanely viral. Um, but, but the thing that's important to understand and what a lot of people are thinking right now and a lot of people that I tell this to are thinking, it's like, okay, you have a lot of followers. Guys, 30,000 followers or 29,000 followers that I have does not include, does not equal 50 million views. There's no correlation here, right? So for all intents and purposes, I could have had one follower. It doesn't matter. All it takes is one person to retweet and then, it, and then it's the ripples of Twitter. So. 30,000 followers is irrelevant when we're talking about numbers like 50 million. It's just irrelevant. So don't think that you need a lot of followers to be successful on Twitter. That is absolutely not true. If you have a good picture, you know, if you have a picture, right? You're a human being, you're not an egg. Get rid of eggs, guys. Put on a, a profile picture. If you have a profile picture on Twitter, a witty bio, cute bio that talks about yourself, but human, not spammy, right? And your tweets are engaging, you talk to people, and you share good content. If, I, if you follow me and you have one follower, I'll follow you back faster. And if someone follows me with a million followers and it's all broadcast, 
one follower and you're a human being on Twitter, you can go very far. So it really is quite irrelevant how many followers you have. Of course, if you have more followers, more chances of getting more retweets, that's true. I'm not saying you shouldn't try to build up an audience, but I am saying don't think you can't get started until you have a lot of followers. That's just completely not the case. Um, and so Twitter really just brings down the, bound, the, the boundaries of society. You can really just connect with anyone and literally anyone. So, I'll, I mean, some of the stories that have happened to me, I'll start with like, you know, when my daughter was born. <clears throat> uh, now she's six, so when she was born six years ago, um, we came back from the hospital and we had, a, a, we had like a basket at home full of cl baby clothing like a big basket, not like a little basket, a huge basket. And it was from Twitter followers, like people that I've never met before and I will never meet before. They actually got together and bought me a, a basket of, of clothing and stuff from, from my baby. Like that was, that is, I don't know, maybe that to me is like unheard of. I mean, again, these are people that I, I will never ever meet, but they feel a connection, you know, and I try to provide content. I try to provide them with value. And they said, okay, it's time to say thank you. And they just got together. I can't even imagine how much that basket cost. A lot. And to ship it to Israel. I mean, it was, it was not trivial. That was amazing. That was really an amazing story for me. That was maybe one of my biggest turning points in terms of understanding the, the, um, I would say the effects of Twitter and, and just building relationships. Um, so uh, that was that was one story that was truly amazing. They just got together. They bought me a baby basket, and that was that was amazing. That was really you know forget like for one second marketing and viral and all that stuff. Just it's happening again. Audio only. Well, we'll be back. I hope the video will be back any minute now. Um, I'm not an investor. Someone asked, am I an investor in Twitter? I do not invest anywhere. I'm not an investor, period. So no, I do not invest in Twitter. I love Twitter. And if I bought, if I did play the stock market, I would absolutely buy Twitter stock. But I, I'm not a stock analyst and I'm absolutely not an investor in Twitter. So uh, I should have, I guess, disclosed that in the beginning. Um, anyway, so I tried on these Bose Q15 noise canceling headphones. I think they're QC15, it's the, the model. They were like amazing. I mean, again, I don't know if you guys have tried this thing, but you basically, you just shut your shut out to the world. You don't hear a thing. It's unbelievable. And that's without music on. You just flick on the noise canceling and it's boom, like it's all of a sudden silent. It's unbelievable. And I was like drooling. I was like, I gotta get these. And my wife was like, yeah, you're not getting those earphones. And I'm like, I gotta get them, they're amazing. She's like, dude, you don't even listen to music. You're not getting the headphones. So I was like, all right, fine, choose your battles kind of thing. And I got on the plane. And the guy sitting next to me as we're taking off puts on the Bose Q15 noise, noise canceling headphones. And I'm like, what? It's a sign. I got to get them. And my wife's like, dude, forget it. You're not getting them. So I uh, landed and I, I tweeted and I said, I tried the Bose Q15 noise canceling headphones and they were amazing. And then Bose, you know, I think it was 24, 48 hours later, THL knocks on my door and Bose, here's a present from Bose. I was like, are you kidding me? This is Bose. It's huge freaking, right? And so. That was really amazing to me, and, and they didn't ask me to review them. It was, I mean, clearly it was a PR move. I'm not naive, and before anyone starts hating on me, it was it was a PR move, and I get it. Fine, but the fact that they just sent it without asking questions, without you know saying this is, you, you have to review this and you have to tweet about us, yeah, they just sent it. They heard me and they sent it. But again, the emphasis here is that they heard me. That's what's amazing, right? This big mama company is even paying attention to this guy sitting in Beit Israel. Like, I understand thirty thousand. That's cute. 30,000 followers is cute, guys. Put it in perspective, okay? They don't need my 30,000 followers. This is Bose. But they heard me, and that was what was cool. The fact that they heard me. The fact that they acted upon that was even cooler, but just that they heard me, that was was amazing to me. And so they, they sent them to me. I still use them till today, and I love them. That's the truth. I really do love them. Um, did I have a following when I started? I shouldn't read. Uh, I'm not reading comments, but someone, Julie, just asked if I, if I had a following when I started setting up interviews, and the answer is absolutely not. The answer is absolutely not. People... You know, let's talk about the interviews for one second, guys. I've interviewed Guy Kawasaki. I've interviewed Scoble and Dennis Crowley and um, Om Malik and David Pogue and M.G. Siegler, uh, Mark Suster and Hunter Walk. And the list goes on and on and on. Like real rock stars that I really wanted to reach. And it was all done through just personal reaching out. Hey, do you mind if I interview you? No. You know, I don't, they don't need me for anything. Having said that, I will say, though, that it's just in terms of if you're a marketer, I would definitely understand the, the psychology behind this because I think that people like to be on stage. I think it doesn't matter who you are. I mean, really, it doesn't matter who you are. And, you know, <clears throat> I'm saying this right now because I'm pretty sure he's not watching, but a year ago today, I just was looking at my time out this morning and um, just to show you how you can reach anyone. Um, a year ago today, I have a picture. If anybody wants the picture, I'm happy to send it to you privately because it's not for public consumption. But a year ago today, I was sitting with Ashton Kutcher in his hotel room in Israel. I've never tweeted that publicly because we 
weren't really exactly allowed to take pictures, but I, of course, had to, so we took it. Whatever. Anyway, it was, it's a cool picture. I can DM it to you or whatever, email it to you if you'd like. It was a really cool picture. And we were sitting with an Israeli startup and Guy Ozeri, his partner in his, in his fund, and he was in Israel, and it was all done through social. We just, you know, we, we, I reached out, and I had to pull a few strings, but, yeah, we got, it was... It was a year ago today. We were sitting in his hotel room in the Don Tel Aviv, and it was amazing. That was an amazing experience. But anyway, I'm really, I shouldn't, again, not, you know, it's not a secret, top secret thing because we did whatever, but I, I'm not going to tweet it publicly. But if you want the picture, let me know. Um, anyway, so the point is you could reach anyone, and um, people like to be on stage, back to interviews. You know, you could reach out to someone and say, listen, I'm doing these interviews. Here are some people that I've interviewed. Would love to interview you. You're a smart guy. I want to pick your brain. I've rarely ever, I don't think I've ever, um, I've gotten one no, pretty much. Let me just think for one second. I've gotten one no, and not because um, you know he wasn't interested, just because he worked for an organization that needed super high up, like PR, like the PR department had to like approve it, and it was a mess. But you know, even senior VP of engineering at Google, Vic Condacher, like he had to get super, like Alyssa Milano, I interviewed Alyssa Milano. She had to get her agent to approve it and everything, but it was cool. And Alyssa, which leads me to my next story. And again, I will read and answer your questions later, but I'm driving now, so I can't do that. But Alyssa Milano, that's probably one of my, my most amazing Twitter stories, I would say, maybe number one. So, and I and I did talk about this the other day, so if you heard me, I apologize, but it still is an amazing, amazing story. Um, <clears throat> so I'm sitting at home minding my own business one day, and I get a push notification saying, Alyssa Milano has followed you, and I'm like, that is not possible, what do you mean? And I followed her before, and she's a huge geek, and I love her, and I grew up on Who's the Boss, and that was... I was like, that, that is not possible. It's probably like a fake account or something, you know? And so I, uh, I, I, you know, I, I looked and sure enough, Alyssa Milano with whatever it is, two and a half, I think, maybe she's two and a half now, two million followers, whatever it is she had at the time, followed me. Now, when someone follows me, I'll, at best, I'll reach out and be like, thanks, you know? Generally, I won't because I'll just, you know, let us, let, let's get us, let us get to know each other in the most natural way. But in this case, I just could not, you know, not ask so I reached out to her and I DM'd her and I said, like, WTF, like, how did you, Alyssa Milano, come across me? I, I said, I must ask, like, I really need to know. And she said to me, very simple, she's like, listen, you know, your blog posts keep appearing in my feed. Like, I keep seeing in my feed people like Buzz Edition and, um, what's her name, um, uh, my friend Diana Adams, Adams Consulting, all kinds of people that Alyssa followed uh, keep retweeting my blog posts. I used to write a lot about Twitter. And um, by the way, if you, if you want to read my posts about Twitter, you can just Google everything you need to know about Twitter and tweeting, and it's number one, and it's literally the most comprehensive user guide on Twitter on the internet. Uh, highly recommended. If you have questions about Twitter, I answer everything there. Anyway, so she's like, I keep seeing your tweets retweeted on my stream, and then I'm like, finally, who is this Hill of Fold guy? And she's like, I tweeted, I clicked on your bio, and you know, you have a cute, witty bio, and you have a nice picture. And I was like, yeah, he seems like a nice guy, so I followed. I was like, that, you know, that to me was like, wow, right? Okay, cool. You know, how does that help me in life, right? Alyssa Milano followed me. It's cool. I have a relationship with her, but how does that really help? Fast forward like a few years, and uh, and this is a very important lesson also. An Israeli startup uh, emails me, and I wake up every morning to like 200 press releases, and they're all spam. What do I mean by spam? They're all like, dear blogger, you know? And some even do it in the two field. They don't even BCC, which is ridiculous, but topic for another time. Um, I talked about it at BCC yesterday. I said the only time to use BCC is when you're mass emailing journalists, which I don't recommend anyway, obviously. But if you're doing that, then don't freaking to, 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 to everyone. I don't want to see everyone's emails, and they don't, I don't want everyone to see my emails. But anyway, someone, this uh, company, Twitterland, sent me a, uh, a press release, and it was highly personalized and highly invested in. They were like, Dear Hillel, we follow you on Twitter. We really enjoyed this blog post that you wrote and that blog post that you wrote and whatever. We have a, a, you know, a platform that does so-and-so. We would love it if you check it out. And that was it. You know, three sentences, no, you know, tweet about us, blog about us, very personalized, just a human. And um, so I checked them out and I did love what they did and I wrote a blog post about it. And I, the name of the blog post, I believe, years ago, I think the name of the blog post was the one tool you need to decide who to follow back on Twitter or something like that. And I tweeted it, one tweet. Alyssa Milano retweeted me. Some uh, sheik in Saudi Arabia retweeted her with 50 million followers. This company in Haifa, Israel, their servers, to say their servers crashed would be an understatement. They melted. Right? They launched their company that way. I think Guy Victor might be here. He's the founder. Uh, he can tell you what happened. But they launched the company that way. And they actually spoke at South by Southwest uh, a few years later. And they talked about their launch strategy. They showed a big picture of my face in the tweet. And under me, Alyssa Milano. And under, him, under her, the, the, the sheik. I mean, that's a crazy, crazy thing, right? From one tweet, an entire company launched. And now they're doing super well. They have, I think, millions of users, if I'm not mistaken. And they're doing really well. They're growing. They raised money. 
I'm not saying that that's because of me. Don't in any way misunderstand what I'm. They're an amazing company, amazing team. Three brothers from Haifa, they're amazing. I love them. But uh, the company launched from one tweet. Uh, and that's because Alyssa Milano was following me. So a lot has come. And that's, you know, on, on, uh, on my birthday, she gave me a huge shout out. Demi Moore actually gave me a shout out on Twitter once, a long, long time ago, saying happy birthday. Interestingly enough, it wasn't my birthday. So I don't know about that. But Alyssa Milano wrote me happy birthday. And New Year's Eve, she wrote me like a DM. She privately wrote me like, and it's, it's amazing. It's surreal, you know? I mean, to have a relationship with someone, again, from sitting here in my little town in Israel, to have a relationship with someone at the pinnacle or not the pinnacle, one can debate. I think she's amazing, you know, in Hollywood, but whatever it is, she's clearly relevant. Um, and it's pretty amazing. So that was really an amazing uh, relationship that I had um, cultivated via Twitter. And I apologize again for anybody who came in. I can't read comments right now because I am driving. I will read the comments uh, later and I will respond uh, to everyone. Um, side point, I'm going, uh, I just got a, a, a Facebook message this morning from Amazon. Someone who works at, at Amazon represents Amazon Web Services in Israel. I'm having lunch with them today, so that should be interesting. I didn't even know Amazon Web Services had a representation in Israel. So I'm having lunch with them today, Hertz. So yeah, that's going to be really exciting. Um, and I am going to hopefully drone later on today, which leads me to my next story. And again, if you've been following me recently, you probably heard this story, but this just happened like last two weeks ago. So it's very, very kind of current events and it's freaking amazing. Um, so I met with a friend of mine, Sean Lewin, uh, maybe three weeks ago. He's a serial entrepreneur. He's, he's a young guy and he's had a few startups. He's, he's a really just, he's a, he's a very passionate and very inspiring guy. And I really like him a lot. He's going to do well in life. And uh, he was pitching on his next startup, something he's going to Kickstarter with. And it has to do with drones. Obviously, can't talk about it yet, but uh, really cool idea. It, I'll just tell you that it solves the problem that drones are really cool. But like once you, you know, you get excited, you use it a little, you put it in your closet, you have nothing really to do with it. So he's trying to fix that. So you'll actually have something to do with it, a use case for drones in the long run. Anyway, you know, I was sitting with him and he was pitching me on it and I was like, this is freaking awesome. And I was like, you know what? And I was never into drones, but I'm, I'm getting myself a drone. And I literally, I went home. On the way home, I stopped off in an electronics store and I took a picture of the Parrot AR drone. And I tweeted something like, yay or nay. And then I said, I, you know, I tweeted, I want a drone. And we had a few, you know, a few answers back and forth, a few discussions. And I was really, really enjoying it. By the way, uh, I hope everybody can still hear me. Give me a thumbs up just to make sure because... It's kind of silent. Either I'm really interesting or people are really bored or you can't hear me. One of those three options. So just let me know if you can hear me. Okay, I hope you can. Anyway, so I was having a really, really good time with the Parrot Bebop. And, you know, again, they didn't ask me uh, in any way, shape, or form to promote it. They didn't. Man, see, Toronto Pizzeria just said that they hear me. And now I went, I'm on audio only. Wow, a lot of, a lot of thumbs up. Awesome. Um, well, I'm on audio only now. I'm going to wait for me to come back to video to continue talking. Uh, this audio thing drives me nuts. Um, well, I'm going to keep uh, waiting here. <laughs> it's funny, I'm getting all these uh, service did drop. Yeah, Jeff, I know. I'm on audio only. Hopefully, it'll come back very, very soon. No, I'm really hoping. Um, wow, how many people? 158 people were here. All right, there. Let me be honest with you. You know, the, the Wi-Fi signal that the drone lets off that you have to connect to your phone seems to be a little bit unstable. It's dropping here and there, and that's a problem because if you're in the air and you're connected, then the, 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 the drone just hovers, and that's pretty scary. So that's number one. And um, number two, I said, listen, it's amazing. I mean, nine of your tweets should be talking to people and listening to people and engaging. Don't use Twitter as a sales platform. These companies are using Twitter brilliantly, brilliantly. Now, here's the thing, guys. By the way, Parrot also sent me an ear, a pair of set of earphones, the Zeke 2.0, which is the most beautiful set of headphones I've ever seen. And it's kind of like a, uh, it's kind of like a uh, Bose competitor. So there's that. I think they're very different though, because the Zeke's are, are, are Bluetooth, they're wireless. So I think the they're probably not as good sound, but they look amazing, and they, um, they're they just premium build. The bows are wired, and they sound unbelievable. Anyway, so here's the thing though, right? So, you know, Parrot and Bose, these guys, they're like big freaking companies, right? They're probably, I know that Parrot's revenues from drones are up 350% just this year alone. So, you know, one might say, okay, I'm a startup, or I'm a small company, I'm a local company, I can't really use Twitter that way. And, and to that I say, you're dead wrong. And I'll give you another example of a story that happened to me. Um, when I bought my house, so one of the first things I needed to buy was a shed for outside, like to put stuff in, you know, shed stuff in. Um, and I tweeted that I needed a shed. And Keter Plastic, an Israeli plastic company that's now not so much Israeli anymore. Now they're pretty big, but they, they're an Israeli company originally. They're not the size of, you know, by any means are they the size of Parrot or, or, um, or Bose. They're not a small company. They're not a startup by any means. They're, they're, they're you know, a pretty hefty company, but still, 
a local company. They sent me a $1,500, $1,500 shed. This thing's like the size of an apartment. And again, did not ask me to do anything. I, of course, promoted it like crazy because it's freaking awesome that they did this. Uh, and, it, and it ended up selling, you know, many, many sheds for them. But it was done because they heard me. And I, I don't even think I mentioned their brand in this case, if I'm not mistaken. I don't want to say for sure because it was a long time ago, but I'm pretty sure I just said that I need a shed. And they had search on the word shed or something like that. And they came across my tweet and they sent it to me. And that was ridiculous. Just, this, is a, this is a plastic company. This is not a, you know, a, this is not a headset, you know, headphones or electronics or gadgets or tech company. This is a, a shed, a plastic company. So anybody can use Twitter this way. And that's really um, what's, what's unbelievable. You know, one more person that I think is, and there's so many, but one more person that I think is really monumental that I connected with on, uh, I am going into a place that I think we're gonna get audio only uh, for 10, 15 seconds, so I apologize for that. I just know this is like a little bit of a dead space right now on the way to Tel Aviv. Um, one more person that I think is pretty monumental that I've connected with on Twitter is Mark Andreessen. And this, you, you have to understand, like this wasn't like, you know, um, accidental. You know, I really wanted to connect with Mark Andreessen. Mark Andreessen is basically the inventor of the web browser. You know, he invented the web browser pretty much, and he's the biggest, I would say the biggest, or I'd say most famous, most popular, most sought after VC in the world. Uh, getting, an, getting an investment from Mark Andreessen's pretty much game over. Not really, but they have an amazing, amazing portfolio. Um, their most recent huge success is obviously Slack, but uh, they're an ama just an amazing VC, and um, I really wanted to connect with them, but it was, again, a dream for me. Like, how do you connect Mark Andreessen? Mark Andreessen's Mark Andreessen, and I'm the woman, I, right? So I uh, I really did target him. I really did. I was like, I want to build a relationship with this guy. Now, what do I mean by target him? Did I spam him and ask him to follow me? Never. I just engaged with the guy for a long time. He would ask a question, I would answer him. He would say something, I would respond. Just as you build a relationship in real life, that's how you build a relationship online, right? Be human. And so I would respond to the guy back and forth, whatever it is. And the truth is, I don't remember what event led exactly to him. Uh, it looks like I'm past the dead space, so I hope we're good now. But um, I don't know what, what event led exactly to him following me. But one day, sure enough, he clicked that follow button. And I DM'd him and I said, listen, Mark, you know, I'm a huge, tremendous fan. I told him about myself a little bit. And I said, you know, just wanted to say hello and thank you for everything you do. And that's it. And that was that. Again, I had no commercial goals here. I had no, like, you know, I wasn't, like, trying to, like, pitch him on any company. I just wanted to connect with the guy. And he was super, super nice, down to earth, friendly, really you know, responded right away. Great to meet you. Good stuff in Israel, blah, blah, blah. Awesome. Fast forward like a year. Now we're in touch. We're, you know, buddies, I say. Maybe not really buddies, but we're friendly, you know, or whatever, acquaintances. Um, and I was like, you know what? Maybe I'm going to go for the kill right now. And I DM'd him and I'm like, Mark, I would really love to, uh, to interview you. And I sent him the link to all my other interviews. And I don't know what, five hours, VentureBeat reaches out to me and they're like, dude, that was an amazing interview. Can we publish it? It's like, yeah, go for it. So VentureBeat published uh, my interview with Mark Andreessen. Well, now we're back on audio only. Uh, Roz, what's up, man? Dude, you like, don't sleep, man. What's going on? Roz is the esteemed CEO of Zula and my boss. Um, and uh, a, a kick-ass, uh, pardon my French, um, um, product product guru. So if you have any questions about product, I highly recommend you follow Roz Yalov on, uh, on Twitter. He's a really good guy. I'm still on audio, so I'm waiting for that to get back to video. Um, and then I'll tell you what happened next with Andreessen because that was really an epic story. What we got here, we're up to 100 and... Uh, I can't look at my screen right now. Like 160 something, I believe. There you go. So the shit, I'm like, yeah, let's go. So they, they published my story, and since then, I'm actually a writer at VentureBeat. They asked me to start writing for them, and so I've been writing, you know, not too often because I like to spread my content far and wide, so I do right now write for, I mean, I've written for Mashable in the past, but I don't write for them anymore. I write for, the, for VentureBeat, The Next Web. Uh, I wrote for GigaOM in the past, uh, RIP. Rest in peace, GigaOM. I love GigaOM. The Huffington Post, The Street, um, and a few others. I'm working on guest posts for TechCrunch, but I don't know what's going on with that. Pardon me. Anyway, um, so yeah, this this uh, connection with Mark. And now, you know, pretty much we talk, I don't talk to him every day by any means, but when I have a question or something, Anyway, long story short, fast forward like a good, I don't know, maybe a year. And I said to him, you know, if you ever come to Israel, I'd love to meet, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, well, I don't travel much, but my partner, um, you know, my you know, Ben Horowitz, he, whatever. Anyway, then he sends an email. It was unbelievable. Mark Andreessen sends an email to this guy named Boaz, who's his venture partner in Israel. Brings deals from Israel to Andreessen Horowitz, and he introduces me, which was 
funny. He introduced me as an investor. He's like, oh, meet Hill, an investor in Israel. He got that wrong, but uh, he made a really warm introduction. And uh, me and Boaz are in touch since then. And I sent him deals. I sent him companies to me. He's a super amazing guy. And this just, you know, connecting with Mark Andreessen on Twitter just led to so many different things. And it's just pretty crazy. I mean, this is what I'm talking about. This is what you can't do this on any other platform. There's no other platform that I know of that you can connect with someone like that and just build that relationship out uh, while you're, you know, across the world. And uh, obviously Gary V, uh, all Twitter. And no, oh, here's another. There you go. I gotta tell you this story. This is an amazing story. But I'm gonna wait till uh, I'm gonna wait till video comes back because this is somewhat of a dead space here. Um, 194 people here. Wow. Or 194 people were here. I see some familiar faces. Aaron, what's cooking, man? Is that Aaron? Yes, that is Aaron Skowski. What's going on? Roz and Melanie, how you doing? Who else is here? Shy. Thanks for sticking around. Mordechai, what's cooking? Roy, I see Roy here. Roy soon. What's up, man? Uh, Jeffrey, there you go. I'm back. All right, excellent. Thank you all for staying in. I really appreciate that. I know it's kind of buggy when it's. Uh, I'm, I am driving though, so it's not Meerkat's fault. Oh, so glad I'm able to hear your stream. It's 2:05 over here. Thanks, Jeff. I appreciate that. You rock, man. Jeff, you do some amazing, amazing work. That happy video that you're doing is freaking hilarious. What makes you happy? He asks people, what makes you happy on your cat? And he then edits it and makes a whole video that's, that's going nice and viral. It's kind of cool. Anyway, I'm wearing happy socks today, though. But I'm not going to show them to you right now while I'm driving. So Gary V, another perfect example, right? We all know Gary Vaynerchuk. And if you don't know Gary Vaynerchuk, then honestly, just I, I want you to stay, but just go. Go to YouTube and YouTube this guy and watch him because you're going to like be in tears. The guy is seriously inspiring. Super charismatic, unbelievable energies. Just an amazing guy. And you know, another person on my target list, I really wanted to reach him. I interviewed him on my blog on this list that I was talking about before. And that was epic, but oh God, I gotta stop using that word. That was amazing. Uh, but you know, again, you know, it's, you interview him by email, that's, that's great. But how, um, you know, do you have a real relationship with the guy? So fast forward maybe two years after me and Gary connected, and we, you know, we were talking here and there, he's following me on Twitter, all's good in the hood. Fast forward like two years, at Zula, we, uh, we decided we wanted to make a conference. Side note, conferences are a very, very effective marketing tool and mo most people don't know about it. We were a small, we are a small company. We decided we were gonna make a conference in New York. We made a huge conference, it was sold out. We brought top dogs. We brought Christina from Mashable. We brought Jay Yarrow from Business Insider. We brought the head of LinkedIn messaging. Um, we brought amazing people. Anyway, I wanted Gary, right? We're talking about communication, I wanted Gary. But I said to myself, you know, Gary's expensive. I can't really, we can't afford that. And this, 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 uh, this conference with the Zula Summit we made was super low budget. So I said, you know, I can try, but I don't, I don't think it's gonna happen. So I DM'd him. I was like, Gary, we're making this thing. I would really love for you to keynote. He's like, ah, I take fifty thousand dollars for my whatever. I was like, all right, man, I totally understand. You know, thanks, no worries. We're a startup. If you feel like coming in, he's like, you know what? The guy sends an email. I'm telling you, I, I like, I'm gonna frame this email. He sends an email to his assistant, and he writes, waive the fifty thousand dollar fee for Hill. He's my boy. Gary came to this conference for free, for free. No money. And he stood there and he talked and he kicked butt. He was amazing. People, and he was at the end of the day. People, the entire place stayed. Obviously, it's Gary Vee. You don't leave before Gary Vee. And he, he owned it. It was amazing. It was unbelievable. Anybody who was at the, the summit, you know, Gary was, the, was the, uh, the highlight. Not that the other speakers weren't. They were amazing. There's some amazing speakers that came, but, but Gary was Gary. And he did it for free, all from Twitter. That's ridiculous, right? That's another example. Another example is Dennis Crowley from Foursquare. I'm a big fan of Foursquare. I always have been. And, you know, just how do you connect with someone like that? And sure enough, we connected and he follows me and I'm not sure actually if he follows me, sorry, that could be wrong. Maybe he doesn't follow me, but we've connected and we've spoken and then I interviewed him on my blog and that was cool. So bottom line is guys, I, you know, it's enough stories for now. I can keep going because there's so many other stories that have happened to me on Twitter over the years, but if you're not active on Twitter, you are seriously missing out on an opportunity. And I don't care if you're a startup, if you're a doctor, if you're a lawyer, if you're a construction worker, I don't care. If there's someone you want to connect with, anyone, guys, Alyssa Milano, Right? I mean, come on. If I can connect with Alyssa Milano, you can connect with anyone. If there's someone you want to connect with, it doesn't matter if they're an athlete, a celebrity, whatever it is, don't go there and open Twitter and then tweet them. Go to Twitter, start providing content, start engaging with people, start building out an audience. You know, again, profile picture for the love of God, people. Do not have an egg as your profile picture. If I see an egg, I'm not following an egg. Someone yesterday who, I don't mean, I'm, you know me, I'm, you guys know, I'm not a trash talker, I don't like trashing people, but there's a guy on Twitter who's just trolling me, all he does is troll me, and he, his, his profile picture is a mouse, like a, like a computer mouse. I, I just got, an, yesterday I just got fed up, and I'm like, dude, just, you, you're, you don't have a name on Twitter, it's anonymous, you have a, a, a mouse as your profile picture, 
when you when you when you have a picture and a name, let's continue this conversation. I'm usually I try to be nice on, on Twitter, but this guy just drove me a little bit nuts. My point is, guys, human, be human. Have a picture, put your name up there. No reason to hide behind anything. If you need to hide behind something, then you're doing it wrong. Um, have a bio that sums you up, and not you know, you know. Don't write like um, I don't know. I am uh, administrative assistant at blah blah. blah. Like make it a little bit friendly. You know, you want people to want people to follow at the end of the day. And if I come across a very dry, boring, you know, whatever it is, someone wrote on Twitter, one of the bios that I like was uh, millionaire, philanthropist, uh, you know, supermodel, pathological liar. Like a joke, obviously. You don't want to say about yourself that a pathological liar if you're a professional, but it was a funny, witty, witty profile that I right away followed because this guy's funny. My point is, have a witty profile. You can, it could be informative, right? My profile, my bio says what I'm doing, but I'm trying to be, you know, at the end it says carnivore because you guys know I like steak, so. Add a little wit so that if someone sees it, like, oh, this guy's cute. I want to follow him, right? Or this girl, sorry. Um, or this woman. Or this kid or whatever. Um, but, uh, yeah, have a picture. A nice picture. High res, please. Don't make a blurry, low res picture. Again, this should be common sense. Have a picture. High res picture. Have a, a bio that says who you are and make it a little humorous. And just start tweeting people and talking to people. It's a communication platform, guys. not a broadcast platform. This is not a loudspeaker, right? None of these social platforms absolutely her writing it and, and many others too. It's them writing and they'll see it they might not answer but they'll see it um and uh you know you don't have to say you know that you want something just say i just want to let you know you know i'm a fan you do good work whatever it is they're doing and that's it now you're on their radar tomorrow they ask a question answer their question the next day they say something respond engage talk right that's what it's about i guarantee you if you do that for an extended period of time and then at some point down the line you say i would love to connect with you i want to talk to you i want to interview you whatever it doesn't matter I'm not saying that Barack Obama is going to let you interview him, but w with few exceptions, maybe even not Ashton Kutcher, but there are the majority of people at the end of the day are human beings and they like human beings. People like humans. People like people. You know, in business, people people don't do business with businesses. You do business with people. So be a person, right? And you can connect with anyone on Twitter. That's the bottom line. That is the bottom line. You can connect with anyone on Twitter. Um, I don't read Arabic and I see the last comment is Arabic, so I would love to know what it says. I, I, maybe you should learn Arabic one day. Oh man, there's a lot of comments here. I really, really need to. Oh my God, cool story, thank you. Uh, taking all your advice and Gary's and it's totally changed the opportunities in these last years. Uh, yeah, Gary's awesome. I mean, Gary's obviously the champion of this. He's responding, look at his tweets. It's 99% replies to people. Like literally 99% replies to people. That's how it's done. Uh, and Gary's obviously the father of, of social engagement. So follow that guy, he's amazing. Um, hi there, I don't, you're all human need to be in wow I'm gonna have to read all these guys and I'm not ignoring them I will read them later um, although I don't think you can read them afterwards unless it's a tweet so if you didn't tweet them you know what I'm in traffic let me, let me do some reading I just set up a Twitter account to sign up for Meerkat good AM live from the train what do you think of the two-state thing we're not talking about politics here today um, favorite part of Uri interview you mean my Uri interview when I interviewed Uri Aramati the is that what you're talking about I don't know. He gave me a scoop that it's coming out on Android soon. That was a few weeks back. Not everyone is cut out to use Twitter in the same fashion that you use it. Jeff, I disagree. Completely disagree. Anyone could use Twitter. But I agree Twitter is badass. Twitter's the best. My stream keeps crashing. Anyone else? Julie, I'm sorry to hear that. I hope it's okay now. Tweet had 50 million impressions. No, tweet did not have 50 million impressions. The picture was viewed approximately 50 million times because it was picked up from Twitter by Mashable and BuzzFeed and other you know, big sites that have a lot of readers. So no, the tweet itself had... Uh, 1,200 retweets, I think. Twitter is the best platform, hands down. I agree. Uh, are you an investor in Twitter? No, we already discussed that. I do not invest. The drone story. I love Twitter. I think it's an excellent tool for writers. Completely agree. Exactly. I, uh, I agree with that, Shoshana, for writers. That's really interesting. Exactly. You could have one follower, Oprah, have her retweet your tweet, and that's all you need. Completely agree. Advice for someone raising a seed round for the first time. Well, that's not the topic here, but if you're raising a seed round for the first time, I would say... You need an amazing investor's deck for starters. Tell your story. What's what's the problem you're trying to solve? How are you going to solve it? How are you going to execute? What's your the size of your market? Who are your competitors? Um, and uh, be human. Like everything else, reach out. As a human being, reach out and say, listen, I know you're into e-commerce. I know you're into whatever, drones. And I have a drone startup. Let me talk to you about it. You'll get good responses. At the end of the day, you have to remember, investors need you like you need them, right? You're getting them into a good deal. Favorite part of every interview? Favorite person you have interviewed? I would say Alyssa Milano's up there. Mark Andreessen's up there. I don't know. There's so many. Uh, look at my list. It's called, uh, the name of the blog post for the interviews is a list of interviews with superstars made possible by Twitter. Look at it and you'll see all the lists. There's some amazing people there. Do you have a following when you started setting up interviews? No. Hi from California, USA. Hi. 
those things don't happen to everybody. They happen to everybody if you invest. And that's true about any platform. You know, people say uh, Google Plus is dead. I want someone to show me someone that's invested a lot of time in Google Plus, posted a lot there, engaged with other people's posts, spent time, and did not get any engagement. I've been doing that, and I have 55,000 followers on Google Plus, and I have 9 million impressions. So Twitter's the same. If you invest in it, anybody can do that. I disagree. What time is it in day where you are? It's Thursday, 10, 15 in the morning. Humble brag, Jeff. I don't know what you're referring to. I'm trying not to humble brag. I'm trying to help and provide value. Boker Tov, good morning. BCC is useful after an intro has been made. No need to include person who made intro and scheduling back and forth. I agree completely. Love the subliminal advertising via a t-shirt. Yeah, I love Meerkat. What can I tell you? This is a little bit big on me. I'm swimming in it, but whatever. It's comfortable. Twitter is great to learn to write directly because of the 140. Yeah, completely agree. It's great for startups because you can learn to sum up your pitch in, in no time. And that's really 234 people here. Holy crap. Uh, then there are, we're here, sorry. It's not too, no, there's only 33 people here right now, but altogether there are 234 people. Then there uh, are people who appreciated you for years. Then there are people who have appreciated you for years. Thank you, Kelly, that's really nice of you to say. Yes, Shoshana, effectively communicating 140 characters is an art form, I completely agree, and every startup needs to practice it. Hope it is not an on-demand drone rental app. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention, I asked Parrot when they sent the new drone if this was for me to keep, and they said, well, usually we ask for a pack, but here you can keep it. It's a thousand dollar thing, so I'm keeping it. That's really amazing. Service did drop. Okay, I hope we're back. Or I gotta go back. I gotta go down to the bottom of the comments. Uh, hey, Mitch, this wasn't Shoshana. Oh, sorry, Sarah Koleski. Sorry, I apologize. Shoshana's your mom. I apologize. I'm so sorry. But it's cool to have a daughter and mom following you on Twitter. That's awesome. Please say on the twits. What does that mean? I don't know. Please say on the twits. Please say on the twits. I don't know what the hell that means. Twitter value isn't all just celebs and big names. That's true completely. Hi, Jeff. I love Twitter too, and it's great. Yes, thanks for all your stories. Until later, shalom. Peace. Twitter is badass. I think we're good. I think I covered 1218 in the turn of the USA. He said in Arabic, you have great words you're saying. Cool, thank you, Melanie. Melanie, you rock. Melanie, by the way, from Canada, is from Lebanon. I always get mixed up, from Lebanon, right? We connected on Meerkat, and we would never have been able to connect. You know, Israelis and, you know, we don't really connect so well in the real world, but we connected and we're good buddies now, and so that's awesome. Meerkat's bringing world peace. Uh, are you the Scots feed, you lawn guy? Feed it, I don't understand. Awesome advice, great advice, thank you. Hi, hi, we are all human. I've taken all your advice on Gary and it's totally genuine. cool. That's an amazing story, thanks for sharing. Gary's almost on a first name basis, Gary's the best. Did you tape Gary V during your conference? Yes, Melanie. Google, I mean, put on, go on YouTube and look for uh, Zula Summit, Gary V, and you'll find the, the his speech. Yeah, it's there. Uh, hello, I'm really enjoying the stream, having some connection problems, keep them rocking. Thank you so much. You, weren't a, um, you haven't mentioned Jeff, have you? Jeff Pulver? Well, we connected, yeah, I mean, we're good buddies. I guess we originally connected on Twitter, I guess, I'm not sure. Who powered your conference? Oh, Shari, shameless plug. Evolero powered my conference, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hanging with Hello, thank you. I am streaming and we are all watching. I really appreciate that. What's up, Hillel? Enjoying the show. Thank you so much, Aaron. I really appreciate that. Hillel, so glad I'm able to hear your stream. It's 208. I think we covered all the comments here. Back to the bottom. Please say on the twits. This Khani something keeps saying, please say on the twits. I don't know what that means, but it's kind of annoying, so stop doing that. Anyway, moving along. Um, you know, just in terms of the different platforms, I, I kind of... It, it kind of like makes sense to me. People say, how do you, you know, you're everywhere, not me, but how, do, how could you be everywhere, right? There's Twitter, Instagram, right? So I think that each platform really does have its unique advantages and disadvantages. You can't be everywhere, but if you have something that's visual, then Pinterest and Instagram, these are these are platforms you need to be on. And, and Facebook and Google Plus, very, very, Google Plus, I would say is better for YouTube videos. Facebook's better for native, you know, Facebook videos. Twitter's great, better for text to go, to go far and wide. But um, I, I really don't think, and I'm, I'm, we're gonna do another stream about Google Plus because I'm very passionate about it, mainly because people don't know. I understand you think it's just another place to update your status. It's not. It's really, really not. It's not about tweeting either. It's about connecting. It's about listening. You know, just take competitive analysis for one example. Just one silly example. You, you're, you're launching a startup right now. How do you do competitive analysis? Right? So what are you going to do? You're going to Google and you're... Dude, open Twitter and put the name of your competitor in that, in that search field. You'll in instant, real time search, you'll know everything that anybody has to say about your, your competitor. Do they love them? Do they hate them? Why do they love them? Why do they hate them? What are they missing? What features? You know, for example, our, our, at Zula, one of our indirect competitors is Slack, right? We're not a competitor because they're eating our bright, they're eating the, the market up like completely, but they're not our direct competitor because they're targeting a very certain type of team and we're targeting different kinds of teams. But, you know, they're in the same space. By, by no means can I ever make the claim that they're not a competitor. They are a competitor. And, um, you know, if you, if you, if you, Google, if you um, put, Twitter search on the word Slack, you'll come across a lot of love. People love it. And there are a lot of 
one of the things that people complained about when I searched when I searched for it is that you can't add team members on on, on, on mobile. Sure enough, as confirmed by Jacob Nerdov, the founder of Zula, you cannot you cannot add a team member on mobile, which is strange for a company that's worth 2.8 billion dollars, I think. Uh, but I'm just saying you can learn everything. You can learn amazing things about your competitors by searching. Just one example. Um, you can also change product by searching. So for example, you know, it's that we were for mobile only or mobile first in the beginning. I was very, it was like people, people don't sit in front of a computer. They're very, very into like on the go. So I was like, let's just do mobile, right? iOS, Android, but we don't need web or we don't need native uh, PC or Mac. But sure enough, by searching on Twitter, A, what people are saying about us, but also what people are saying about, let's say WhatsApp. A lot of people wanted a web app. And so we said, all right, let's do it. So we actually built a web app based on, you know, audience research that we did on Twitter and other platforms, but including asking some of our users, but people really wanted a web app and we launched a web app literally because of that. And so it's Twitter's, Twitter's amazing for, for search, for, for research, for connecting. And of course, yes, for distributing content. If you build out that, that network, you build out that following, you absolutely can reach anyone and everyone across the world with absolutely no limits. That is all I got to say about that. I will do another uh, stream absolutely on, um, on Google Plus, and I and I highly recommend you listen to that because 99% of the people here, and without even verifying this, can, I can tell you right now that you have a huge misconception about Google Plus, and you're missing out on an amazing opportunity. But that's gonna be another time. Uh, Facebook, I'm, I'm I, li- I love fa- Facebook as a as a personal social network, but for businesses, I think it's a complete fail. Business pages, I don't know, I, I I'm not a fan. But that's another topic for another time. Anyway, thank you all for coming. Amazing, amazing engagement here. Uh, 250 freaking people, amazing. Um, let me see, just create a logo for me. Can I promote my website, Hillel? That's probably not the best idea to promote your website in here. I would say that's not a good idea at all. Especially since it's kind of silly since no one can click on anything here anyway. Uh, so try not to be too promotional and uh, spammy. It's not what Bearcat's for, it's not what any platform's for really. But if you build out a, a following, then they'll follow you and they'll know what your website is and then they'll click on it and then you'll get customers. But that's long-term, think long-term. Anyway, peace. Thank you guys so much for coming. Traffic a whole lot more pleasant, and um, and uh, I just love it. I'm really, really enjoying it. And I hope I can. I hope I'm providing value to people because that's really what it's about. Uh, you know, helping, trying to help people. And um, so if, that, if I'm doing that, then thank you, Meerkat. And uh, we're on audio only again, unfortunately. So I'm just gonna wait till the video comes back. And um, if there's anything else, guys, that uh, quite a list of people interviewed. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate that. I, I, you know, it took a long time to build out that list, but I'm very proud of it. Hill, I'm trying hard to listen to all your comments and see how I can hear you and apply it to a completely non-tech, extremely high-end business. You could ping me on Twitter, and I am happy to help in any way, shape, or form. Honestly, just ping me and be like, I was in your stream, and I want to talk, and happy to jump on a Skype call, and if there's anything I could do to help, totally, you can count on me. I'm, I'm always happy to help. Um, so, oh, oh, that's David. Oh, I know you are. You make freaking custom suits for like NBA players, yo. Yeah, I could definitely help you. I'm very into suits, as you know, and I can definitely, I'm happy to help. If there's anything I can do, just ping me. We're friends on Facebook, so just let me know what I can do to help. Uh, I'm waiting for the video to come back, and um, just generally speaking, guys, if there's anything I can do uh, for you and your company or whatever, if I can, I'm not saying I can, but if I can, I'm happy to do that. And if there's any topic that you want me to talk about, I'm your cat also. Uh, just totally let me know. I'm happy if, if I know about it. Obviously, I you know I don't know I don't know close to everything, but if there's a topic that I know about, I'm happy to talk about it. Um, I could definitely talk about this marketing thing and social and all these things for hours. Uh, so I'm happy to do that. So if there's a topic you want me to address, just tweet at me and let me know what it is you want me to talk about, and I'll do it. But I'm definitely going to try to do this uh, try on a daily basis. It probably won't happen every single day, but I'm going to try. Anyway, peace out, guys. Thanks again for coming in.